Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another project for Hobby Hoppers. Today I am so excited to share this 3D project with you. I feel like I may have gone a little bit overboard and there's lots of learning along the way with this one. So I hope you enjoy this project. So as you may have guessed with this one, it was made using the Builder House die set by Lawn Fawn. And it's got a lot of other cute little stamps in there by Lawn Fawn too. So we're getting started with the house first. And so what I've done is cut a few of the houses out of some white cardstock. From here, I'm using my scoreboard, and as you can see, I'm just rolling my house along this, marking out where all of the corners are. I didn't know if this would work, but this was a surprisingly good way to make, I guess, a bit of a frame or a, a shadow box. I'm really not sure what terms to use here with all of these pieces, but this is what is giving my house all of its dimension. Once I had marked all of them out, I then score a line, a nice thin one along the edge, and then I'm going to cut at all of the corners. This is going to make a whole line of little flaps to stick down onto my house to give it its dimension. So here I am just using some PVA glue and running it along the edges of my house. I left a little bit of extra cardstock so that I could fold it down to make a flap so that the two ends of this stick together. And then it's kind of just a matter of squishing it into place and sticking it down onto that house. Considering this is the first time I've ever done that, it actually fit pretty well. It did just have a little gap down the bottom, but I've already got plans to cover that up. So like I've been doing in a few of my other videos, I'm playing with my white stencil paste by Lawn Fawn and I'm customizing the color by mixing in some Distress Oxide ink. Today I'm using Hickory Smoke and I'm using my brick stencil again. I just love the way this stencil paste is looking with these bricks. Just a little bit of dimension totally changes everything. So as you can see, I'm mixing my ink in with my stencil paste and I'm covering as much of that house as I can. And once that's done, I then go back over it a little bit and kind of mess up the smooth bricks, if that makes sense. I really like the different texture this gives. You'll see it up close soon. So after that was dry, I then adhered it onto my house. And the reason why I've done it on a separate piece of white cardstock is because the stencil paste do tend to warp it. So I figured doing it on this and then sticking it down to a sturdy piece of white cardstock that hasn't had anything altered on it would just make everything stick nicely together. So what I unfortunately didn't think of because I was getting too far ahead of myself and too excited to see everything come together was the sides of this house. So what I would recommend to do if you were going to make something like this would be to use the stencil paste on this whole strip first and let that dry before assembling the house. So I'm just trying to line up my stencil on the sides and dab a bit of that grey ink on just so I can continue the texture. It doesn't quite have the effect that I would like. I think the stencil paste would be much better for this, but at least it's not just plain white. So what I'm doing here is adhering on my little frame for my window. I've cut a whole bunch of things from black cardstock. The frame, the edges of my roof, the roof for the ground floor. I've also done my front door and my step. I just really like the grey and black together. I felt like it was nice and neutral and then I could decide what pops of colour I wanted to put with that and pretty much anything would match with that. What I wished I'd thought about ahead of time was that sticking this piece down means that I would have a little bit of difficulty sticking some Christmas lights under there. Again, I was just too excited but now that I've made it, I know that I probably wouldn't stick that all the way down to the edges. This little black step is going to cover that bit where my house didn't quite go all the way down to the bottom of that frame that I had made. To continue on the look of the front of the house, because it's a 3D project, I'm cutting some more of the same pieces, like this roof, and sticking it on all the areas where it lines up with the roof on the front of the house. And the great thing about this die set is that it's got all those corners and lines in it, where this was very easy to line up. I love the look this gives, it really makes the house look much more dimensional. At this point, I didn't know what I wanted to do with the front door. So I left the door unglued <laughs> and I had just glued the frame down for now. I didn't know if I wanted a little character poking out or to do any decorating like that yet. So I left my options open. Here I am just sticking some more roof pieces on the side to continue the look. I also did this with that little step down the bottom just so that everything was matching. I feel like it's really important when making a 3D piece that elements like this do go around the sides. It just really makes the sides not look plain. It might be details that people don't even notice are there, but that's kind of the point. It all looks seamless. On the inside of my house, I grabbed a tiny little piece of scrap vellum and I'm sticking that over my window. Just gluing around the edges, not putting any glue on the vellum. I did this to diffuse the light because the little light I'm using on the inside is super bright and I don't want anyone to look through the window and see the light itself. I'd rather it just look lit up. 
So the inside of my house here was looking really stark white. So I've just watered down a little bit of that hickory smoke and I'm just covering another house that I had cut. There's so many of these little house pieces in this project. And I'm going to be doing that on the inside walls and ceiling as well, just to tone down the bright white. Once that dries, I'm then going to stick this house piece on the inside. I have just trimmed the sides a little bit so that it fits. And the reason I'm doing this is all of those little flaps that I had cut earlier are visible. So this piece is going to totally seal that up. It'll make it look much neater and it will also cover the piece of vellum and seal that in there so that you won't ever see the edges of it. Once that's in, I'm then going to put the second frame in there. And I love how seamless it makes the window with its little window pane look. I decided in this house I wanted to make it two stories because there's so much room at the top. So I've cut just a little piece of white cardstock, again making some tiny flaps around the edges, and I'm just sticking it a little bit under the window. I've used the lines of the roof on the sides of the house to measure out where to put this. Once that was done, I then decided to add a little piece of black cardstock cut with a stitched rectangle to the floor down the bottom. It's not a very exciting piece of flooring, and I know my walls are a little bit dull too, but if I ever make something like this again, I will definitely be doing cutesy wallpaper and nice flooring. So as you can see, I'm just pointing to all the bits and pieces I'm using from all of these stamp sets. There's not many stamped images in this set, but there are a few from multiple sets. The Merry and Bright set is one of my favourites from Hobby Hoppers at the moment. I've been having so much fun playing with it. Those little mice are just adorable and all the accessories, the trees, the little baubles, it's all so cute. So here I am stamping the ornaments directly onto the tree. I know that you can stamp them separately and cut them out, but they're little and they're a bit fiddly and my little mice are already going to be holding one each and that was enough <laughs> for me to have to make sure I don't lose. So I really like stamping them directly onto the tree. I feel like this makes colouring a bit easier as well. I can do it all in one go. So on to colouring today. I'm using a mix of Copic markers and regular alcohol markers. And because I had just refilled my skin tone Copics, I thought I would try to colour my mice different colours than I usually do. I love my grey mice and I'm going to be sticking with them. <laughs> I realised as I coloured these in, I just didn't like the look of them. I think I was using the wrong tones. They were way too orange. They weren't brown enough. I just started to get upset with them, so I gave up on the brown mice very quickly. It might seem a little dramatic that I've put a cross through them, but if I don't cross things out like that, I will still die cut them just out of habit, or fussy cut them, which just wastes time. So after giving up on my mice, I moved on to colouring my other images. And I'm keeping things simple. I'm using some reds and greens. I thought they're perfect Christmas colours and they go perfectly well with the neutral set that I had already created with my grey and black house. So while I'm colouring all of these, I thought I would tell you a bit about Hobby Hoppers. So Hobby Hoppers is a Melbourne based online store. It is a small business run solely by Trish, who is a machine. My orders are always perfectly packaged and they get to me so quickly which is what you want when you're crafting because if you've bought something with an idea in your head it's always best to get it as soon as possible while you're feeling motivated. I love shopping at Hobby Hoppers because Trish has so many lawn fawn things as well as so many other beautiful things too. One of my new favourite items to play with is the Hemptic hemp cords. They are beautiful, they're nice and sturdy, they actually make my bows look really nice when I tie them. I'm going to be using a red one a little bit later in this video. And another awesome thing that Hobby Hoppers stock is washi tape. And there are so many designs. My washi collection is a little out of hand. I love it. And I feel like it's probably going to get a little bit more out of hand because I love the stock that Trish keeps. And I've just bought myself a planner for next year. I haven't been planning for quite a while, mostly because at the beginning of 2020, I had my daughter and then we were stuck at home for a majority of the year. And I was literally writing things in my planner like, wash the dark clothes, wash the light clothes, clean the toilets. And it was starting to get incredibly repetitive and almost a bit sad. There was nothing exciting or fun to write. <laughs> but now that things are looking up a little bit, my eldest is off to prep next year. So I'm going to have a lot more to plan for and a lot more to get excited about. So who knows, maybe for some Hobby Hoppers projects next year I might do some planning and some plan with me or layouts or see what Trish thinks about it but I'm really excited to get back into it. I would love to know if you're a Hobby Hoppers customer what are your favorite things in the store? Is it the lawn fawn stamps that I love to show off? Is it the washi or is it something else? There are so many things there. So as you can see I'm getting through this coloring fairly quickly. It's nice and easy when you're only using a couple of colors you don't have to think too much. So I'm just using two different shades in every area and blending them together. Same as always. Once my colouring was done and I had fixed my mice and brought back my grey mice, I'm then going to add my white details all over these. 
I do that with my white jelly roll pens and today I'm using the size 1 and the 0.8. I love my size 1, it's nice and juicy, it's great for my bigger images and my 0.8 is great for anything smaller. I do sometimes bring out the 0.5 for really tiny details but my 0.8 seems to do even the smaller items really well. I'm so excited that these pens are going to be stocked at Hobby Hoppers soon. I love knowing that there's going to be somewhere that I can get them from and I won't have to go searching for them like I have in the past. It's just another thing in this shop that I can add to my order and get it all in one go. Once the white highlights were done, I then die cut my images or fussy cut the ones that I don't have dies for. And while I'm here, I'm going to quickly whip up some Christmas lights. And this is from one of the add-ons to the Builder House. I believe this one is the Christmas one. It's Christmas lights, so it should be. I'm just going to colour a bunch of them and I'm not worried about the order that I'm colouring them in because I'm going to be chopping them off this piece because I had glued things down too well before I need to slide them up in to place. So here I am gluing my front door down because at this point I have decided that I am not adding a character behind the door. After I trim off all these lights I'm then going to glue them one by one into place. So while I would have rather have a strip of lights here, I don't mind. I quite like the look that they're on either side of the door, rather than going the whole way across. I'm then going to add some on the second story as well, up around the window. So it was then time to start decorating the inside of my house too. And so what I'm doing here is adding some foam squares to the back of my Christmas tree. I wanted it to be raised off the wall and I really wanted to add as much dimension as I could in this little space. Before I get sticking anything down in there, I'm going to be setting up my little images on the outside, letting them dry so that I can play with them as one big piece. This way I don't have to worry about knocking a hat off or the stool moving while the glue's still wet. I love that I have put the mice on stools that are opposite to their size. I just think they're so cute. For my little presents, I'm going to be overlapping them a little bit so that it looks like a huge pile. And behind it, I've got just a little scrap of white cardstock that I've bent into an L shape. I'm going to stick that behind them. These are going to sit propped up in the attic and I want to be able to pull them down so that I can slip the light behind them. So I stuck them in the attic and now I'm going to be assembling my scene down the bottom. Starting off with my Christmas tree, removing the backing to those foam squares and sticking it in. And I'm already loving this scene. There's only like two things in there and I'm already excited about how it looks. It reminds me of like a tiny dollhouse. It's just super cute. So what I've done here is I've layered a few little foam squares on top of each other for I guess a huge bit of dimension and I'm going to be sticking that to the back of my mouse and then kind of wedging it into the corner. It was a little bit fiddly because this space is pretty small. But once he's stuck down, I then glue anywhere on the back of him that's touching the walls and the tree to adhere him into place. While I think the foam squares would have been enough, I do just worry that with the rest of him not being attached to anything, he might get knocked out of place. I did the same for the little mouse on the other side too. And then I had all these extra accessories and I wasn't sure where to stick them. So I stuck one on the wall and then I stuck the scissors and the sticky tape on the floor. Like these little mice had been busy all morning and had left their tools on the floor while I decorate the tree. I stuck a foam square on the back of my little Christmas tree and that is what I'm going to be sticking on the front door. I just love how that looks, it's so sweet. So these little lights I grabbed from eBay a while ago, they're called balloon lights. Got some double sided tape on that one and I'm sticking it up in the attic. It is a little tough to turn on, some of these are and some of these are really easy but I just happened to pick one that's a bit tricky. So moving on to my dome, I will post the name of the brand that makes these domes in the comments and on my blog. I'm not sure exactly where to get these from anymore, but around this time for Christmas, you can find them at a lot of different places. I know a lot of maybe cheap shops and places like Kmart tend to have stuff like this too. An alternative to this could be just a plain glass dome on top of a wood slice. I just happen to have a few of these in my drawer that I have been meaning to use for a very long time. To keep with the colour scheme, I'm painting the ground white like it's been snowing and I'm painting the edges black. I do two layers of the white just to cover up as much brown as possible. 
And as you can see by my lighting, I'm working well into the night here. I wanted just a few more details in my house because I can't help myself. So what I've got here is the little string of Christmas lights from the Bar Humbug set. Honestly, if you don't have this set, it is one of my favourites already. I've only had it for a couple of months, but all the little accessories in this have been so useful for all of my cards, especially that little Santa hat. So what I'm doing is sticking the lights half on the roof and half on the back wall. It kind of covers the join where my attic is separated from the bottom floor, and I just have always enjoyed making my pieces look good from every angle. So if you're looking up into the house, you can see lights. If you're looking down into the house, you see the, the tools on the floor. And again, because I just love adding more details, I did a few little snowflakes and I'm going to be sticking them on the back wall with some foam squares and on the floor. I thought it might make it look like these two little mice have been making paper snowflakes. Something I haven't done for years and really should do with my son this year. And I placed these on the walls, kind of on the scissors to look like it was being cut. I just love these little extra details. I think that filled in the space nicely. I also used a little die cut star from my Hearts and Stars skinny tag die set and some yellow cardstock. It just wouldn't be complete if there wasn't a star on the tree. Now this step isn't necessary, it's just me being a little bit particular. I coloured in all the little areas that were white that kind of look like they should be blending in with the black spaces. Again, that's just me being fussy and wanting that continuity on all sides. I added some PVA glue to the bottom of my house and I stuck it down on the floor of the dome. And oh my goodness, at this point I was looking at it thinking, gosh, this is cute. This is coming together so nicely. I'm just loving it. On the very edges of the house, kind of to seal in any gaps, I've popped some PVA glue there too. And I'm using some of this fake snow. This stuff's pretty terrible. I'm pretty sure you can get better stuff out there. I think I grabbed it just from like a really cheap shop here. It was probably a dollar or two and it's really terribly shredded plastic. <laughs> I did consider pulling it off at one point, but it had already dried and replacing it with maybe some Nuvo drops. Some thick, chunky glitter Nuvo drops would look really cute in place of this, I think. And isn't that convenient? I'm pretty sure Hobby Hopper stock that at the moment too. So once that is done, I set that aside to dry. And then I'm going to add some white gold watercolour pigment flex over this because it's my favourite. And I just really wanted to make it look a little snowy over this house. So I flicked off the heaviest drops and from a distance, I'm just sprinkling that on. Trying not to get the inside of the house. And now here is my red hemp cord. I'm wrapping it around my dome a couple of times. And then I'm going to tie a little bow. I just thought this added a little bit of a nice detail on that. It made it not so plain. It continued the colours from the inside and outside of the house onto the outside of the dome. And then it was time to seal it all up. I haven't glued this down or anything as I want access to the house to turn the light on and off. But there we have it. My little house in its dome. What a sweet little Christmas decoration. This was so, so much fun to make and I hope you enjoyed watching it. I absolutely love doing these projects for Hobby Hoppers. So make sure you check out the Hobby Hoppers website. It's hobbyhoppers.com.au. There are so many beautiful things stocked there. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see whatever I come up with next. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.